Uh, I'm going to talk now with Lance Foreman, who before the break, I said he wasn't a former Conservative MEP. He was a former Brexit Party MEP. But then, Lance, I remembered you defected, didn't you, you naughty man? How are you doing? Just for a week, Alex, just for a week. I know. And like I said, in history, you're going to go down as a Conservative. Uh, no, as a Brexit Party MEP, because you got voted under the Brexit Party ticket. Uh, anyway, um, listen, we, we need to talk about something extremely serious right now, because as much yeah. as we try and talk about this on this channel... It is still constantly passed over, and that is the threat to the Jewish community. Jewish worshippers, this is a, based upon a charity who's saying there's been a huge rise in anti-Semitic incidents in the UK, including Jewish worshippers being beaten, alleged arson attacks on property, religious ornaments vandalised. The report reveals record levels of hatred towards British Jews as Hamas attacks drive up anti-Semitism. Hamas themselves, frankly, I've got Big Phil with me now, who's an uh, intelligence expert, and will very clearly point to foreign involvement in whipping up this frenzy. And of course, all that chanting we've heard at the pro-Palestine protests. Well, they're not pro-Palestine protests, uh, Alex. They're uh, Jew hate marches. You know, um, many Palestinians were killed uh, in Syria. Where were people marching for the Palestinians then? This isn't about uh, being pro-Palestine. You know, if people wanted to be pro-Palestinians, there have been so many opportunities for the Palestinians to make peace uh, with Jewish people in Israel, uh, but they don't want that. They don't want a two-state solution. They just don't want Israel to exist. And what you have in London and other cities around the world is a potent mix of just ignorant people. You know, some of them might be do-gooders and mean well, mm -hmm. but they're completely ignorant. But they are mixed in with radical Islamists who are using them as useful idiots mm. uh, to try and promote this radical cause. And there is two-tier policing with this stuff. You know, when these people are chanting for global intifada, that's global revolution and terrorist bombs against Jews. That's what happened in the intifada. Thousands of young Jews were killed on buses at pizza parlors in Israel mm. in the early 2000s. Uh, um, when they call for jihad, when they call, you know, um, the chant from the river to the sea, that is a genocidal chant saying no more Jews in Israel. And this is what people are standing by and the police do nothing. Yeah. You know, if, 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 if the far right, as they're called, were calling for violence against Jews or you know, um, genocide, whatever, the police would be all over them. Mm. But with, with the Islamists, they just let it go. Yeah, I mean, this is what's important. I've, I've been saying for a long time, look, like, I'm not, you know, someone wants to crack down on freedom of expression and right to protest. But the minute that we had it on authority from Robin Simcox, who is the government's advisor on counter-terrorism at present, is the, the, the minute that he said and it came out publicly and he confirmed that there was foreign malign involvement in these protests. That is the moment uh, at which Rishi Sunak, the former Prime Minister, should have said, we know now that these marches have been infiltrated. It doesn't mean everyone on them is aware of that, but we know that they have. And for that reason, we're going to follow suits with France and Germany and say they must come to an end now. If you're a good, well-meaning person who is worried about some of the things you're seeing online about casualties and fatalities and all the rest of it. We're not judging you for that, but please don't come and join these marches because they are being used by enemies of this country and actually it's having a huge adverse, a disproportionately adverse effect on other members of our community. Now, if we'd just been spoken to like adults and disbanded those marches in a commonsensical way, I don't think that, you know, it would have accelerated to the level it did the other day with the riots here because it almost set a precedent that the way to be heard about whatever topic it is, to go out and get away with stuff and if one pe lot of people get to get away with stuff then so should we well that's absolutely right and not only did they get away with it they got away with it week after week after week even with numerous complaints coming through from jewish people who are genuinely scared and afraid to go into london you know a city they live in they just don't feel they can actually go into the city you know somebody should have cracked down whether it was the mayor of london the home secretary or the police no one was doing anything and you have to ask the question, why? Yeah, I was about to ask you answer. why. Lance, I was going to say, why, why do you think that is? Well, I don't, I, to be honest, I don't know. You know, is it because they've been infiltrated? 
Uh, and there certainly was evidence that some of the people advising the police turned out to be radical Islamists themselves. Right, the community or leaders of organisations such as Cage and Mend, which Michael Gove has sort of, uh, you know, at least correct. put on a watch or, list if not fully prescribed. Indeed. Or, or is it that they're afraid to clamp down because they're afraid of being accused of Islamophobia in exactly the same way as they were afraid to clamp down on the grooming yeah, gang? Yeah, let, let's, bring, let's bring old Big Phil into this. Um, I, I mean, look, I... I I'm totally with Lance on this. Mm -hmm. it, it was just, it was always going to be there, at least in part, even if the majority of people, there's a lot of sort of, you know, Instagram middle class women who just want to seem nice and put a photo on Instagram at these things. Um, you know, I, I think they're kind of losers and I think yep. they don't get it, but I don't blame them for that. I don't yep. hate them for that. I just think they're just, you know, they are what they are. The naive masses. The naive masses. Um, but we do know that, and it's been said publicly, that these things have been infiltrated. Um, so why is it? Lance asks a perfectly valid question of why mm -hmm. the, the government didn't take the opportunity when they saw the opportunity there that there's, there's intelligence to show these things are compromised. You've therefore got a reason. It's not clamping down on free speech. Yep. It shouldn't even be saying to Muslims, well, now that community must be even more inflamed and angered because they're not being allowed to protest because it's saying there's an actual reason of public safety here yep. and in the national interest that these things don't happen. So why didn't they take that opportunity when they had the chance? It's very, very difficult to answer without getting um, you more, more information behind it. One of the reasons could have been that the government had assessed, or those that are advising the government had assessed that if they did clamp down on these, then more radical extreme groups would go out and start to riot and cause real disruption, and that would have been jumped on by the terror that, organisations. Ironically, is that not what's actually happened? Because I would say that the contributing factor oh, to the yeah, radical yeah, riots yeah, that and, we've just seen has been these and, and, and again, this is, this is where a lot of the decisions that are made in government, because government is, is working by soundbite and not substance, and it's been backed up by press by soundbite, not substance, um, people aren't thinking through the second and third order implications of what they're doing. So by not banning it, um, you know, they, they haven't worked out that this is what could happen. Um, by banning it, they've gone, uh, you know, and we don't know the real logic um, uh, that, that's gone through the government, government thinking. So there needs to be more detail put into the thinking of all, all of these things. And I, you know, I know where security services do a lot of the thinking. It's whether the politicians and whether the senior leaders and the police and all the rest of it actually listen to that. The police officers almost certainly will do, but how much political direction is... A lot of this is done behind closed doors. Mm. It's, it's, it's in very grey areas. We don't know. We don't know. Lance, I, look, while I've got you on, I want, to, I want to give you the opportunity to tell me... You know, I keep, I, I've nicked, I've taken back the phrase, not taken back because it wasn't mine in the first place and I don't like it, but I'm nicking the phrase lived experience from the left because it drives me freaking mad. But if uh, various people get to have their lived experience, we all do, right? So I want you to tell me and tell our audience and anybody watching this, what it's been like for you? Oh, well, uh, amongst the Jewish community, I mean, people are fearful that the, the conversation that's going on is you know, will there be a place for us here in this country or for our children, certainly for our grandchildren, uh, should we consider? Because you have to remember the mindset of Jewish people. You know, we went through a Holocaust in living memory. And the reason we went through that is because so many Jewish people that were living in Germany in the 1930s were so integrated in society and thought this could never happen, you know, what did happen could never possibly happen. So everybody's sort of sitting here thinking, well, we'd be stupid if we didn't learn the lessons from then. So maybe now's the time to leave the UK while we still can and head off to, I don't know, America or Israel or some other country. So that, that is the conversation that's going on. But the, the, the other problem that we, that we face is that we really do feel that the mainstream media uh, uh, are, are against us and they've completely bought into this sort of Islamist agenda. And you, you have to look at, you know, the, the BBC are, are wholly responsible. You know, they've been institutionally, in my opinion, and the opinion of many people in the Jewish community, institutionally anti-Semitic for many years. They produced a report 20 years ago, the Balin report, which has never been made public. They spent, the BBC spent half a million pounds in legal fees to ensure this report never uh, saw the light of day. 
But the BBC has 40 million viewers with BBC Arabic, so they're never going to... BBC Arabic is a very alarming uh, it, it is, element and, 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 and Al Jazeera and Sky News, you know, it's a, real, it's a real problem. We're not getting balance in the media. That's yeah. why people are ignorant. Yeah, I mean, Phil, you were, you were nodding to, to, to things that Lance was saying there. Uh, and... I mean, what I don't understand is how, for a long time, it's been trendy that it, it, on the left wing, and it's becoming sort of vogue again now to sort of look at Israel, look at Jewish people as somehow the ones with the privilege that must be beaten down. Mm -hmm. Where does this come from? It, it is the politics of envy, it's the politics of hate. It's the politics of division to say, well, you know, Israel's been an extremely successful nation. It has cohesion. It has all the stuff that left-wingers keep saying that we don't have enough of. It's got gay clubs. It's got, you know, women who are serving in the armed forces. It's got all the great things that otherwise they seem to think is exactly what we don't have enough of. And yet they'll look at Israel and look at the Jewish community and say, you know, these sort of, like, ridiculous ideas that somehow they control the world and have all the money, etc. Why, why is that still going on? Well, I, I think it's, they're, they're setting a precedence in the Middle East that... Um, goes against all of the other Middle East countries that, that are there. And that, that's why they're having, there's been real difficulty historically, I think, integrating. Um, and, and, and people have been selective again in their application of history. You know, the Jews have been persecuted you know, since you know, time began virtually. Um, and you know, the Jewish faith existed long before the Muslim faith came along. Uh, and um, you know, the Israelites were there before um, what we are now describing as Palestinians came into came into Judea, um, and people are are willing to mix all of these things up. And you know they're bringing democracy, they're bringing freedom of expression, they're bringing um, equal opportunities into a region where you don't have democracy, you don't have freedom of expression, and that's why you know, it's seen as an enemy. And the persecution that the Jews suffered in Germany—it wasn't just Germany; it was France, the Netherlands, mm -hmm. Belgium. It was across the whole of Europe were then um, taken and, and yeah. pushed into concentration camps, and that's something that you. You, you, you cannot forget. And then since the Israeli state has existed, it's existed in a state of um, uh, where it's been threatened with its very survival. So from day one of it existing, it has had to um, have a policy of national survival in the way it's trying to protect itself. No, no one else has had to do that. 